Hello Channel Need viewers, I am DS, your psychologist and welcome to another episode on Channel Need. In this episode, we are going to discuss whether the ENTJ is a scheming person. The word scheming overlaps with a lot of other words, so there's a lot of grey zone. With this word scheming, people might think of manipulative, people might think of strategic. Generally, the correct way to look at an ENTJ when scheming is concerned is that Probably the ENTJ is scheming, but it is not directed at any person. It's directed at achieving a particular outcome. So let me give you some examples. So in many of my previous episodes, I mentioned that I was born into a gambling family. So my parents are habitual gamblers. They are also very controlling, especially my mum. So she wants me to be at home at a particular time. There was once I went to a swimming pool and the swimming lesson was cancelled. So somehow she got to know about it, but I didn't tell her about it. I didn't come home immediately. I continued to go to the swimming pool to swim. She actually went to the swimming pool to find me. So as I grew older, I realized that she will always monitor my life, which is not what I want. So I started to become scheming in the sense. So my objective is very simple. I don't want her to meddle with my life. So right at the age of 17 and 18, I started to devise a plan. I would go home late. Even though I do not have a need to go home late. So right after I finished school, probably around like two days in a week, I would deliberately make a big detour. I would take a random bus to go to some random places and then find my way back home about three to four hours later. So sometimes I will reach home at seven. Sometimes I reach home much later. Why? This is to grow a habit of me reaching home late. If I were always going home and reaching home at around 4 o'clock, next time, if I ever go home late around 8 o'clock, she will start to question, where have you been? That kind of a thing. So, strategically, from an ENTJ's point of view, you have to grow a habit. The first few days where you end up late, she may ask you why, but subsequently, she will stop asking because it has become normal. And in that sense, it really works. For me, I really have no use of staying out late, but the use is to grow this habit so that she will not question me in the future. Remember, TE and NI can be very future oriented. Sometimes this may not be very straightforward. So I'll give you another example. Right at the age of 18, I am still a virgin, <laughs> but I really want to have sex. So I wouldn't know. It is very possible that I could be a promiscuous person, right? So. How do I bring random different people back? So I start to plan the same way. Just very much like an INTJ, but the thought processes may be very abrupt. I imagine, but I don't develop along the line. So it's very quick. I try to get a feel of whether this idea works, then I move on to the next one. So I was thinking right then, back then, that okay, maybe I can bring people back different people, sometimes guys, sometimes girls, to make it a norm that I always bring people back. But then it becomes difficult because I cannot close the door if I have a lady friend or a female friend in my room, right? Because it's not gentlemanly. <laughs> so if I have a guy friend or if a guy classmate, then invite them back to my house and then I can close the door. But for girls, Probably, they would feel safer if the door is open. So that doesn't make sense. It doesn't help and facilitate the process of me having sex in the future. So this way of making things normal is quickly abandoned. It's not a good strategy. So I have to think of a next possible strategy and this strategy comes very quickly to me. Why? Because after my national service, I had to go to university. And the solution is very straightforward. Go to a hostel. Let me give you a third example. As an ENTJ, I am very SI blind. So as a result, I do not adopt new uh, technologies very quickly or things that are new. I don't take it up very quickly unless absolutely necessary. But back when I was around 20, immediately I jumped into something that was considered new. And that is the non-passbook account. So long ago, banks issue passbook, which is a physical thing. So I really don't like that because my parents are habitual gamblers. I don't want them to know how much money I have, even though I was a student and I don't have much money. I just don't want them to know. So this problem of having a e-statement, for example, is very convenient. 
because my parents don't know how to use the internet. So sometimes immediately when I was introduced to a new concept, like do you want to have a e-statement account, for example, I would immediately say yes, because I could envision in the future what utility it has by considering my own circumstances. So not only can I consider my own circumstances, I can also give advice to other people. So there was once I told a girl who wanted to be an actress that she should never have a tattoo. Because it's not strategic, you know? Why? Because once you have a tattoo, you actually effectively, essentially reduce the probability of you having a sponsorship. Then all the beauty products, all the facial products, they will not want you to be their ambassador because you have a tattoo somewhere. So a lot of people, they don't use brains to consider the future, but the ENTJ really looks into the future, just like the INTJ. But I think the ENTJ thought process is much faster. So anyway, side issue, as a general rule, ENTJs, INTJs make very good advisors, but they will not make good counselors. So sometimes I also think of a lot of random strange issues. So in one of my previous episodes, I actually talked about the serial killer. Now, if you really want to kill somebody, you need not be a serial killer. You plan to kill your auntie, for example. You don't buy a knife the day before. Actually, sometimes I was thinking from my own point of view, I would rather buy a knife now. I don't know who I'm going to kill. Just in case I need to kill somebody, then four years later, I have a knife. So if the police were to track, they would not be able to find that I bought a knife, for example, even if they suspect me, right? And the worst thing that you could do is to buy a knife using your credit card. Damn stupid. Always use cash. So the ENTJ thinks a lot like that in advance. Like, for example, I think it is very good to have a medical record, especially a mental medical record. You never know when you will need the insanity defense. So it's good that you have a history of it. So it's very much like the backup plan. Don't know why you need it, but in case you need it, in the future, you can use it. So sometimes I watch movies and I get inspired. So there are some movies, like detective movies, whereby the uh, thief uses some powder and then recognizes the numbers on a safe, right? So let's say they want to steal a diamond from a safe. They will put some powder on the number pad and then they realize that, okay, the numbers 1 and 8 and 7 have been used. So they try to guess the permutations, how to unlock the safe. So an ENTJ like myself, I will say that, okay, if I have a safe, I would make sure that I press every number periodically so that every number has my fingerprint. <laughs> or I will periodically erase or clean the number pad so that all the fingerprints go away. Because the ENTJ doesn't like to clean much because of SI blind spot, <laughs> I think it's much easier to press every number. Like just, ah, just anyhow like that. Play with the keyboard. So an ENTJ may think of really practical things like how to make your parents stop nagging at you to certain things that are very far-fetched like in case you need to kill someone. Everything the ENTJ may have thought about it. So I presume the INTJ may also go through the same type of thought processes in real circumstances and imagined circumstances. In that regard, I think the INTJ and ENTJ may not be very different, but uh, the thought processes, I think, for the ENTJ is that we don't develop along the line. We just like generically, if I ever kill someone, yes, I have a rope in my house. So I bought the rope like three months ago, for example. So it may safe for me to kill someone using the rope maybe five years later. <laughs> anyway, the conclusion for today's episode is the ENTJ is scheming, but usually not trying to manipulate a person but scheming in the sense that we think of how we can achieve a particular outcome. So if along the way we have to do something to a fellow human being, then maybe we will. Not necessarily we have to harm them. So ultimately the most important thing is we ask ourselves, how can we achieve this outcome? We think of all the possibilities and we evaluate whether it's good or a bad strategy. So if it's a bad strategy, we start to think of another possible strategy. 
Okay, I hope that this episode has given you some insight into the mind of the ENTJ. So at, at Channel Need, we produce a lot of MBTI videos. If you have not subscribed, do consider subscribing so that we can bring you more ENTJ, MBTI and fun stuff. Okay, I am going to sign off now and I'll see you in our next episode. Bye-bye.